let's take a look at some very, very, very tiny little magnetically operated lights. And these are designed for use. In fact, we'll zoom down so you can actually see the things. These are designed for use in things like props or costumes where you might not have easy access for putting a button in, but you can mount these into the thing before it's used. And then to turn it on, you simply hold a magnet near it. Oh, it is uh, attractable to the magnet as well. Let's try that again. Off, magnet, on, off, on, off, and so on. And this means that supposing you had it in an inaccessible position, that it just wasn't really convenient to gain access. Let's make sure I know where the little uh, sensor is here. Uh, you could then effectively get that. Oh, Bumble fingers. It's a very small magnet. I could use a really big magnet. That would make things a lot easier. But let's try this again. So imagine you've got this with the LEDs underneath. You can effectively just uh, hold the magnet near it to turn it on and off. Now the other one is different. It has multiple effects. So if I hold this nearby, it, uh, I'll hold it for a few seconds to turn it on. And then it lets you swap between different effects. Different speeds, different effects, including static on. Um, they don't look massively different when they're just changing speeds, but you can see that it is multiple effects. Um, dimming up and down, and there is a total of about 16 settings, including off. That being off, but you can also, uh, if it's on, you can just hold the magnet over it for a few seconds to turn it off, and then Hold it over for a few seconds to turn it on. It doesn't matter which side of the magnet you use. It is a Hall Effect sensor that is being used here. Likewise with this one, it doesn't matter. Uh, God, these are so small. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, this side of the magnet or that side of the magnet. It, uh, flipping the magnet over doesn't make any difference. Right, I'm going to uh, take pictures of these circuit boards and we'll reverse engineer them and we'll see what makes them tick. They're going to be very simple. One moment, please. Okay, let's start with the small one first. It's very, very simple. This little chip here, just marked G, is a little toggle switch. This uh, transistor type device here, marked 47424, uh, didn't really pull up much for that odd number. It's quite a strange one, but it is a Hall Effect sensor. It's a little transistor type thing that detects the presence of a magnetic field. And the output on this pin here, it just changes logic state. It can actually go positive to negative, which means it can be used as a logic input into this chip here. So here are the main positive connections from the lithium cell. And then there's the other connection is just a pad on the back of the circuit board. That's got a decoupling capacitor. The power then goes straight to the little control chip. I don't know if this is a microcontroller or just a dedicated sort of flashlight control chip. Uh, this one is just a single function on and off. Power also goes to the, this chip here. So it's got the output from the detecting magnet. And then the output with no resistor goes across to this LED here. Let's take a look at the more complex one. In this instance, we have the power coming on and going to this STC microcontroller. It also goes to the little magnetic sensor, which does have a proper number, 6207M, and that does pull up the 6207 is a standard Hall Effect sensor. If you search for 6207 Hall Effect, you'll find it. And there's the little decoupling capacitor. Um, these resistors have one end connected to positive and the other end connected to the positive connection of the LEDs. And there are pairs. There's 10 LEDs in total, which equate to the five spare pins here with two LEDs per, per pin. And fundamentally, power goes to chip, power goes to the Hall Effect sensor, decoupling capacitor. And then uh, this pin here toggles. The, the chip just pulses it and tells it to step through the modes. Let's take a look at the schematic. or the schematic zzz, because there's two of them. Also notable that my favourite now is the smallest one, because uh, the big one has a huge problem. Let's talk about the, the big one's huge problem first. I've taken the battery out of it because its standby current is almost 2 milliamps on a tiny little lithium cell. It's a 1632, 
And that's really high. I don't know, maybe if I'd left it longer, it might have gone down to a lower current, but I was just probing on. Um, and certainly the current stayed at two milliamps for quite some time when it was off, which is not great. When it's on, depending on the number of LEDs lit, it's 4.5 to 12 milliamps. 4.5 were just for a pair on at a time. If they're all lit at once, uh, 12 milliamps. So it just varies. Look at the simplest circuit first. Lithium cell, it's at CR927, that's a 9mm diameter, 2.7mm thick, a little decoupling capacitor, the Hall effect sensor, and then the little chip which has, what did it have printed it? It had G, so let's put G, it's a G chip, OG, and then the LED, that's it. Its standby current was not measurable, it was less than 1 microamp, running current with the LED lit with a fully capacity cell is 15 milliamps so it's a better option this one more or less the same arrangement it's got the lithium cell the decoupling capacitor the hall effect sensor signaling to the microcontroller which is an stc hg 1k 08a and then it's got one resistor 200 ohm resistors power two leds in parallel going to the microcontroller pins and pulling low because that's how most microcontrollers can switch most current um Standby current was the 1.8 milliamp, run 4.5 to 12 milliamp. That is it. So they're useful. I have to say that I'm a wee bit disappointed at the high standby current. They could have done so much better than that because I don't think much current is taken by the Hall effect sensor. Certainly on this one, the wee tiny one, the current drawn is negligible in standby state when that Hall effect sensor is still active. So it's not the Hall effect sensor. It's absolutely the microcontrollers being left running there. And that's why it's uh, drawing uh, that current. They could have put it to sleep and it could have woken up on detecting or they could have just woken it up after a time and just monitored for the, the magnet being applied, but they didn't do that. Now it's possible maybe it does go to sleep if you don't disturb it for a while suppose I could tack some wires on, I could just leave it running continually in a standby mode and see if it goes to sleep. I'll do that right now. One moment, please. No, I have given it the benefit of the doubt. I've got the Fluke connected, 1.86 milliamps, just standby current permanently all the time. Having said that, there was no obvious reason for it to do anything but go to sleep immediately when you turn it off because it's when you hold a magnet near it, it's going to be there for like a second or so. So there's plenty of time to have cycles just to wake up and check and see if the magnet's there or not. It's just sloppy software. They're not just putting this to sleep. So that uh, means that the lithium cell, if it's left in it, will not have a terribly long standby life, which is a bit disappointing. But on the other hand, the little dinky one, it will have a long standby life because it, uh, it does, uh, well, it's a dedicated chip. It's going to go to sleep uh, when it's turned off. Well, it's just got a low standby current. But there we have it. They're interesting little lights. I'll provide links to them in the description down below if you think you have a use for these things. But of these two, though this one's quite nice, that swirly effects, my favourite is the little simple ones available in a selection of colours that are just simple on and off because the standby current is negligible so the lithium cells will have a good long lifespan.